Hi guys, thank you for coming here today. I know it's uh, the last day and it's after the party, but uh, believe me, I'm gonna go home too, so we'll wrap these things uh, pretty fast. So first I wanna pass over this slide because uh, I most noticed most of the sessions didn't put any accent on, uh, on the three words that I really want to emphasize this here. So obviously we're here all to learn. We're learning too, even if we're presenting to you guys. But the most important part is to connect and explore. And connecting means that we want you guys to come to us and to try what we're doing, what we, the partners, do, what Microsoft provides with the new technologies, so we can make those tools better for, our, for you guys. Because even if we have the greatest experience with the technologies, especially with the new ones, we cannot make them better if you guys don't tell us what, what you need. So please give it a try and we ha you have free tools, you have everything that you, you need. So today I'm going to talk about what you had on, a, uh, on the MSIX packaging and package support framework solutions. These are two main uh, technologies that will help you modernize your app deployments on Windows 10. So um, the MSIX uh, modification packages will allow you to decouple your customizations from the main packages, and the package support framework will allow you to fix your app compat issues without any, um, without writing any code for your application. I'm Bogdan Mitrashi. I'm the head for, for the product Advanced Installer, and uh, we've released the Express Edition in March. Kevin Gallo, the corporate vice president from Microsoft, announced this. It's a, a free edition that allows you guys to try MSIX packaging and to tell us how it works for you guys. So on top of the packaging tool, this free edition creates a project for you guys. So it's a, a lot easier to manage the resources that you're building. It's also to maintain the project. It integrates with Visual Studio. So developers will not have any reasons to not deliver you packages in an MSIX format, unlike you had a problem with AppV in the past. And it will also be useful for you guys when you build in-house apps for, for your teams. And uh, it can also import existing Apex packages so you can migrate easier. We, it imports actually everything, MSI, Apex, AppV, any other packages that you guys need. So we'll have all the resources to download at the end of the slides and you'll find there all the information. Okay, so the first part of my session is about customization packages. Packaging paralysis, some of you guys, uh, how many of you have been to the previous sessions on MSIX? Oh, quite a few, you, you, know, you know the topic, what, what, what it means, packaging paralysis. So I'm going to explain for those that will see the recorded session. It's all about getting a new app, creating a customization package, getting an update, and going to that cycle over and over again. And that's going to cost your organization money, it's going to cost you time, and it's probably gonna give you some headaches from, because from time to time those customization packages break or who knows. That kind of is I, some a type of work that doesn't give you any return on investment but you just need to do it over and over again. So with customization packages from on the MSIX packaging format, we want to decouple that for you. So you had the Windows updates which now will start to be, have started to be twice a year in the spring and in the fall. You have the multiple app updates, maybe one or 10, or we do like one every month for advanced installers, so it depends from for how many updates you install. And you have then the customization package. That could be one and never changed again, or you can do one every year depending on what, what you have in those customization packages. And the idea is that, as I said, first of thing, you minimize the packaging operations because you don't do that many uh, packages for every update of, of your app, but it's a standalone MSIX package. So you do not install it together with the main app. You can deploy the app and later on if you have some templates as you'll see in my demo or some new add-ins, you just push that over and the users will receive them. You can version them different from your app so you can keep a history of the updates. You can add multiple packages on a, on a single app just like we have add-ins on Office and all of that. And one of the main differences for modification packages is that they combine with the main package at runtime of the application. So you do not have to combine them as you've had with the MSIs and transform at install time. 
the actual merging of the contents from the two or more packages takes place when you launch the application, when the user launches the application. So the idea is that if you adopt this model, these benefits should give you in a more relaxed state so you can think about learning new tools, bringing real value into your company while saving money on, on a, not repeating operations that do not provide any additional value. So I'll switch to a small demo to show you how advanced install helps you create modification packages. Okay. So how many of you guys are using advanced services? I already met a user. Oh, quite a few, that's nice. Thank you. So you, uh, this is the star page where we have all kinds of projects that you can create. The tool was initially a tool just for developers, so that's why it has a lot of templates to import all kinds of solutions. But in the last five to seven years, we also expanded to providing solution for the enterprise market. So in the Windows Store group, you go and create a new project. And basically on the right, uh, on the left side view, you can see the pages where you can configure the project info contents. So you have the package basic information, digital signing, as you all know, all packages must be digitally signed. Files and registry, we've added some options to localize the packages and the options to build the package. And an MSIX modification package requires the ID of the main target package. And as we've noticed, especially with developers, mistakes tend to happen all the time when you copy paste things or you type them. So on this side, don't get me wrong, but we don't trust you and we ask for the full package so we can extract the things that we know are there. So we get the ID from the package and then you just need to say the ID for your package. Okay. Okay. and some additional information for branding. Okay. And here it says I did a mistake. So we validate all the contents from, from the views. So unlike writing the MSI the Apex manifest by yourself, if you use the Make Apex tool from the Windows SDK or other free open source tools that besides taking a long time, allow you to do all kinds of mistakes like this one, we make sure that you do not put any invalid data in, into the package. So I'm going to change this one. I shame back and head on to configuring my digital signing. Here's just a one click of a button. We automatically get the signing tool from the SDK here on my Windows Insider build. I have the Insider SDK that needs to build uh, MSIX packages. So that for you guys, if you want to build any MSIX packages using Advanced Star or any other tool and on the current version of Windows 10, the public release, you cannot do it because you don't have the signing tool, so you need to run an insider build. And here I already had a certificate, but if you don't have one, you can just push the create button on the right side, it will create a self-signed certificate for, you, for test purposes. You can even get that and deploy it internally in your company, so if you don't. And here's the cool part that some of the guys here from our team build it. So, what you see here is the contents of the target package, all these folders that are disabled and the files you see here that are disabled that says target package files. So you get a bird's eye view of the main package before you start adding resources on top of it. So again, you cannot make any mistake on saying I want to add a file in a caffeon slash target app because the folder is there, you don't have to type the name of the folder, you just put in the files or anything else that you need. So I'm just going to add the files. Okay. This can do the same with the, with the registry. As you saw, the folders highlighted in background, background on the left side to show you that we've modified the package. Now I'm going to build it. Let's first install the main app because the package otherwise it will not install. You'll get an error saying, hey, the target app is missing. So you see, the 
config file is basically a text file. I'm saying, I'm, read me the file is not there anymore. It actually is not in the main app. It never was. So now we just go and install the modification package. And we launch the app again. And this is our templates file content. So it basically merges the two uh, virtual uh, file systems of the packages and com the, access, the application can access the resources from modification package. So I'm going to show you here, like a bird's eye view here. In PowerShell, if you get Apex, maybe wondering why it's Apex is because it's the say, underlying structure of Apex packages. Uh, and you see the modification package highlighted. It shows you the dependencies of the main app. And if you run a dir on both of the folders, you see there are separate installation folders. So each of them contain only the, pack, the files from the package. And when you launch the app, they combine, uh, the operating systems combines them. Okay. And if you install the second version of your app, as you probably have already seen, the modification package doesn't have to be changed. So now we launch the app again. Actually, it launched. So it's still reading the templates from there. That's because they are completely independent. And you just, maybe you saw it, we have the projects here, so you just open the project again, modify whatever you have in it, say this is version two, and build it again. So that's why it saves a lot, a lot of more time for you guys than passing through a wizard like the MSIX packaging tool and stuff and repeating all of those things again. Now I'm going to head up to part two because time is running out. <sighs> Legacy apps. I just talked to one of you fellows here that said they had one app that couldn't, was practically stopping their migration to Windows 10. And I'm sure that some other of you guys have been in the same situation, right? And nobody wants to debug what's crashing in an app when you don't have the source code or you're not a developer or you have many, many other apps that you want to migrate. You just want to have the tool tell you, hey, this is crashing, you might fix it this way or this way and let's move on because I have another 2,000 apps that, that are waiting for me. So that's why Microsoft open source the package support framework. It's based under Detour APIs for those of you that are developers and may have knowledge about them. It's a, a framework that allows you to debug and also integrate fixes in your apps at runtime. So it's much more like custom actions, but for the app, not for the installer anymore. So you don't, have, you don't need access to the app code. You just write or use the built-in uh, fixes from the package support framework. This is an open source project, so the community can, can contribute. Microsoft already has provided some, uh, some of the most well-known fixes. And, uh, we also add additional ones in advanced installer. And what we've done in advanced installer is a built-in integration because if you see the other two sessions on MSIX that talk more about the packaging support framework, you'll see that's not quite easy to use. It helps you, but it's not quite easy to use. So I'm going to switch again to a demo. This is a pre-release version, so hopefully everything will go just as planned. If not, wait one more month and you can get it from our website. So here I have a project which has a, a simple app. It's the app that you may be already know. It has a, it's trying to write to the install folder of the, it, it, its own install folder. And here on the left side, you see all the views that uh, allow you to customize an MSIX package in advanced install. So you never do anything manually in the manifest or something. We do, we generate everything in the background. So customize it all in from the UI. You have the application and app compared here is the view that we've added for integration with the package support framework. You have options to trace the package, to uninstall it, and to configure the tracing levels, and to add fixes if you already know what's crashing in your app. Uh, the file direction is built in in the package support framework from Microsoft. The DLL directory is a fix that we provide for app paths when the DLLs are not found on the machine, and you can provide your own custom fix. And more will show up in the future based on the feedback we receive from you guys. So this app fails to write, and I'm just saying trace my app. Building, practically, we are building the package, deploy it, including him the tracing schemes that Microsoft provides, and capture the, the logs from there. So let's see if the demo gods are with me today. If not, I have a recording for you guys. So. Oh, I'm a lucky guy. 
So it says I'm trying to write to uh, program files. Obviously, the app crashes. Here you get the full log based on the tracing options that I configured. It can be more or less. And here I get the summary of the errors that are missing. And those that are highlighted already include some automated fixes that we could try. So in this case, just click on the error, say add file redirection. And you can say redirect me only this file, the entire files that are of the extension type log, or any file from the install folder. App there is the install folder in, a, in advanced install. So I'm just going to say redirect me any file. Let's do it. This is my previous test. And let's close the app. Redeploy it again. Let's see. So basically what it does here, it takes the package for framework, gets the DLLs, the shims from the package for framework, integrates them in your package, makes all the connection. The package support framework is basically a launcher that launches your main app and in hooks into its memory model and maps the new DLLs that help all overcome these uh, limitations. We're removing the old package and reinstalling the new one. This launcher, besides what uh, it integrates from the package support framework, it also integrates some additional fixes from, uh, from our own part. So, for example, if you have app data files in the old MSI project, we automatically detect that because those app data files end up in the virtual file system of your package and we migrate them at the first time uh, the user launches the app in the real app data from uh, the Windows packages folder for modern apps. So you can see here, it's my lucky day. Everything's working fine and the app is running. So you didn't have to write any code, you didn't have to compile the DLLs to download anything from the GitHub repository or to analyze any logs because process monitor, I love it too, but when I spend two days debugging something, it's not, a, it's not how I want to spend my time. So let's switch back to my slides. So these are the two main important features. The modification packages you guys can already try now with advanced installer. If the first version were released, some of the improvements that you've seen in the uh, on this demo today will be released next month. And uh, the package support framework is going to be released next month. This is a beta version which, I'm going to, which I've shown you today. The Express Edition contains some of this support. For example, it will help you guys debug stuff thing, but obviously we have some commercial editions. And uh, more resources you can find on the Desktop Bridge uh, blog from the Microsoft App Console team. Obviously the MSIX documentation, it's a, it's a recent site that helps you guys is, uh, get up to date with, uh, with what's new on MSIX and watch the sessions for what, uh, those of you that haven't uh, watched the sessions. Okay, so if you have any questions, I have two more minutes. If not, you can find me by here and uh, thank you guys for coming to here today. Please, please don't forget to fill out the evaluations.